I think the idea of media literacy, or sometimes it's called media fluency these days, really derives from an older initiative, which is still around, called critical thinking. And that basic idea has always been about raising the ability to make judgments about information in the world. And the focus on media and media literacy is really about the means of communication of that information. So when all, most of our information was in text form or verbal form, people were really interested in this critical thinking. How do I make judgments about the information that I receive? Now we're in a world in which most of our information perhaps is coming to us via some medium, um, video, audio, or some interactive means. And we certainly do need the revision of how to help people improve their judgment with respect to the information that they receive through those vehicles. Media literacy involves your ability to both understand media products that you encounter, but also, I think most importantly, to create your own. And so someone is said to be literate in conventional terms, not only because they can read, but because they can write as well. And so I think comprehending the kind of media products that you come across, no matter what the technology, is only one half of media literacy. The greater your ability to create new content in any of those technologies, the higher your level of literacy. The ability to analyze content is also, I think, a very central element of what it means to be literate. And again, you know this from conventional literacy because as you get older, you are introduced to the concept of the book report. And suddenly what is communicated to you then is an expectation that not only should you be able to recognize all the words and understand what they mean, but react to them in some way. And so the ability to analyze written content is understood to be a part of sophisticated literacy. It is no less important in any kind of media content. The, probably the biggest difficulty that human beings have in dealing with information that requires some kind of critical judgment is getting the order of analysis and evaluation correctly. Human beings tend to evaluate before they even go to analysis. And one of the difficulties of working with media like television and video is that oftentimes that media is specifically designed to influence people on an emotional and visceral level, that is to make evaluations immediately. And so the time scale for people to analyze the information and to come to a reasoned judgment about what they're hearing and seeing is often inverted. So people are making judgments, evaluations, uh, based upon information that may be lacking any kind of reasoned analysis whatsoever. There's a tendency to take media content at face value, in part because you're not trained from kindergarten forward the way that we're encouraging in the media literacy movement to train people all along, and in part because the everyday messages that we encounter are often not taken seriously by people who take other kind of content seriously. Until we get comfortable as instructors, professors, teachers at all levels, until we get comfortable developing standards for the analysis and evaluation of tweets, of YouTube videos, of any of the content that people are likely to encounter, then we're not prepared to create the tools and teach children how to engage in that kind of evaluation themselves. And so, of course, you would ignore something that no one has ever told you ought to be taken seriously. I've tried in many of my classes to use movies, Hollywood movies, as examples of philosophical topics. Maybe it's got to do with the mind-body relationship, and I show a section from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Almost always the reaction of my students has been, this is just a movie. It's only for entertainment. There is no intellectual content in it. You can't learn anything from it. The same exists with games. I work to get my students to think about World of Warcraft and, and games like this in a philosophical way. And I constantly receive a resistance from them. It's just a game. And the just there is really meaningful, meaning it's nothing but a game. It doesn't have any consequences for us. It doesn't mean anything other than that. And, and 
it's a real, real interesting challenge. So honestly, I think that that shows the need, the desperate need for media literacy, because if people believe that the thing that gives them some of the most information about the world is somehow value neutral, then they've already bought into it without reflection. And it's the problem of media literacy to get people to reflect on what they take for granted. I think it's important to begin media literacy in the K-12 stages of education because if you wait until university to spring on people the idea that in fact there's such a thing as film studies that really take movies seriously, then you're forcing people to remember all the films they ever saw and for the first time wonder if they can apply these new ways of understanding them. The same thing with television, the same thing with the games. The more they start developing that habit of analysis and evaluation, the better they'll get at it. And the more parts of their life they start exposing to those kinds of analysis and evaluation. The later we wait to suggest to them that in fact, all along, the adults around you have known that we have these standards and we have these criteria by which we evaluate these things. The more we deprive them of working those muscles from a very early age. The role that 3D virtual environments may play in the way we communicate with each other in the future has been contemplated for decades now because the potential for that has been growing and growing and growing. We'll have to learn how to evaluate our behavior in those environments and conclude for ourselves whether we hold ourselves to the same standards in those environments that we do in conventional spaces. Interactive technologies like immersive environments augmented reality, all of which we're working with in TAC and SMS to bring to students and to faculty are going to be part of the developmental process. We're going to have to have critical thinking, literacy and fluency focuses because the issues that we're talking about with media, which preceded us with text, are going to become even more exacerbated in these interactive worlds. I think that the OSU supports media literacy education in a number of ways, and I think there's room for growth. New Media Communication Program is built upon the idea that we need to support students that have talent and interest in becoming producers of information via media, and that's a very important part of our university. But in a broader sense, to be able to support students in the critical thinking form of media literacy, they're consumers. They may not be video makers, but they're video watchers. And so they need to be able to make judgments about that, how to understand the argumentation of a visual presentation. And I think this is something that we ought to have across the entire university as a, as a norm. Here at Oregon State, I'd like media literacy to continue to expand well beyond our media program. The way that forestry does, I'd like as many different academic disciplines on the campus as possible to start seeing the potential of communicating the essence of their discoveries in as many different media as possible. I think it'd be nice if 30 years from now we're dealing with a generation of scholars who've spent their entire education acquiring communication skills in a broad palette of media so that they're fully capable of expressing their knowledge in a great variety of ways. And they consider that perfectly normal, and they can evaluate the work of their colleagues in a variety of different media, and that they'll wonder why we weren't doing this all along.